everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on uh, tips for completing your application for the Master of Science in Data Science program that is at the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, we're so happy that you are joining us today and that you are you have started your application for the program. Um, my name is Caitlin Rye, and I am the Graduate Program Advisor for the program. So I'll be the the kind of first point of contact that you'll have with the program and I'll work with you throughout the time until you go to graduate from the program. So as your advisor, I help with course planning, uh, making sure you're on track for graduation, in addition to connecting you with different resources on campus. Um, with us today, we also have Jennifer, who is the uh, marketing and program coordinator uh, for the program, and she's also another face for the program that you'll uh, interact with during your time in the program, in addition to helping you um, throughout the admissions process. So um, in terms of the Zoom interface, uh, we're just going to kind of give an overview of some of the features that we'll use for today's session. Um, one thing to note is that we will be sharing this recording in a few days. So no need to worry about taking any notes or anything like that for the session. Um, we will make sure that you have this recording so it's helpful as you continue to progress through your application for the program. The next two features are a chat feature and a Q&A feature. Um, so the chat feature will be right at the bottom of your screen here. Um, and we'll use that um, throughout the presentation but the most important one is that Q&A feature. Um, I promise we'll have time at the end to get all of your questions answered for the program. Um, so please hold these questions to the end, but at the end, you will use this Q&A feature for the Zoom room. Um, in terms of what we're gonna be talking about today, uh, we'll be providing you a brief program overview for those of you who uh, maybe have heard of the program, but don't know much about it quite yet. Um, however, majority of this presentation will be spent on going over tips for the application process. As all of you have started an application and you're at different phases right now, um, we want to make sure that we're giving you kind of the, the, the best advice as you go to complete that application. So in terms of kind of that program overview, as mentioned before, uh, the MSDS program or the Master of Science in Data Science is housed at the University of Colorado Boulder. And the University of Colorado Boulder is um, a, an amazing school. It's a world-class university with over 850 visiting international scholars. We're also in the top 30 in the world in education. Uh, based on educational quality, student training, faculty prestige, and faculty research. Uh, we also have a number of other, you know, really uh, important statistics, including we were ranked number 59 in the best global universities in U.S. News and World Report. We're also a tier one research institution that really um, focuses on entrepreneurial technology. Um, and we actually have a lot of students who have graduated and gone on to win uh, Nobel Prize winners, including uh, five National Medal of Science winners and 51 Fulbright Scholars. Uh, so, you know, these graduates go on to accomplish amazing things, as we know that you will too. So in terms of the campus, uh, for those of you who have never been to Boulder, I highly encourage you to come for a visit. <clears throat> but CU Boulder, <coughs> pardon, CU Boulder has an active student life. So you can join a student organization or a club. You can check out different student events. And you can even join a graduate and professional student government. You can get involved with different cultural events. And you can also be a part of intramural or club sports if you are interested in sports. So there are numerous activities to get involved with. Um, there's also on-campus housing and campus dining options for those of you who wish to live in graduate student housing. And there are also numerous off-campus housing options as well. 
Um, there's always an event going on on campus, um, including run by the program council. And they do put on live events, concerts, and movie screenings throughout the year. Um, so on any given day, you will find lots of things to do um, outside of the classroom. And I do encourage you to maximize your time spent outside the classroom as well. Now, in terms of Boulder itself, um, many outdoor and adventure lovers flock to Boulder. It's an amazing place to do um, different outdoor activities. Um, in general, Boulder has over 150 miles of hiking trails. Uh, so once again, lots of things to do on and off campus. There are even hikes within a day's drive from Boulder, including Rocky Mountain National Park, Garden of the Gods, and Hanging Lake, as you can see in the picture above. You can rent snowshoes or bikes to go on different winter and summer activities. If you like rock climbing or mountain biking, Boulder is definitely your town. Um, there's hundreds of trails and crags, so you'll never run out of places to explore. And you also do get free access to shared bicycles around Boulder. So you can always bike to different locations such as Pearl Street. Um, and Boulder is known as a foodie town. So there's lots of great restaurants and breweries and coffee shops um, that you can hang out with with your friends that you'll meet in the program. So in terms of just involvement for data science students, um, there's a lot of opportunities for you to get engaged in the program. Um, this program is a cohort style program, meaning that students enter all at one time and most students will be taking the same classes at the same time and you'll progress with the same group of students throughout your time in the program. So it really gives you that kind of one-on-one -on -one and group interaction with your cohort members uh, to be able to, you know, do a lot of different professional and social networking. Um, with that being said, there are also opportunities for you during your time as a student, including a mentor-mentee program. So, you know, as you complete your application, and if you're interested in being a mentee, uh, you will be paired with a mentor who is a current uh, MSDS student who can kind of work through um, different things with you, like how to adjust to starting in grad school. If you're an international student, how to adjust, you know, coming to the U.S. for study, um, what it's like in Boulder or at CU Boulder in general. Um, so it really gives you that partner to really be able to connect with. And then once you are a current student, you have the opportunity to be a mentor for other incoming students. So it's a great way to start meeting people early on in your program and to also connect with students while you're a student as well. There's other group social activities, including different holiday events. Um, we do have an upcoming Thanksgiving uh, event for students. And we also have end of term parties as well uh, to kind of give students time away from the class, but to be able to connect with faculty and students in a more casual environment. We are also offering data hackathons. So if you are um, an experienced programmer or if you're new to programming, it gives you an opportunity to uh, you know, take that to the next level. Um, and there's other kind of professional networking opportunities as well, including student government, career fairs, lunch and learn programs that feature different speakers um, from within the campus community and outside the campus community. And of course, there's more. So there's lots of ways for you to get involved um, as little or as much as you want to be involved outside of the classroom. So uh, in terms of the curriculum, I'm going to go over this really quick because, like I said, I want to get most of the time to spend to that application tips part of the webinar. Um, but in general, uh, the program itself features 21 credits of core courses and nine credits of electives. So in terms of some of those core classes, you are required to take different foundational classes, statistics courses, computer science courses, and then some other core classes as well. Um, so these classes here do make up those 21 credit hours of those core classes, and it really features kind of the breadth and depth of different data science topics. You're learning how to be a data scientist, 
Um, so all of these classes will have, you know, hands-on experience um, to be able to prepare you to be a data scientist when you go on to graduate from the degree program itself. In terms of those nine credits of electives, uh, that's something that you'll actually work with me as your advisor to make sure that you're taking electives that align with your goals and program objectives. So uh, featured here, there are some of the opportunities for electives that you can take, but this certainly isn't an exclusive list. Um, so these electives are featured in different departments on campus, including the computer science, business, information science, and there are, of course, other opportunities as well. One thing I'd like to mention, too, is that if you are interested in doing an internship or an independent study, those would be elective classes that you can take. So an internship is something that you can take in the data science field, and you usually will work off campus at a company working with the career services office to attend those career fairs, go through resume workshops, things like that to prepare you to apply for an internship. There is also an independent study option, um, which is a great opportunity to explore topics that are not covered in existing coursework. So this is a good option for students who want to work with an individual faculty member on different research topics or a different topic that they want to get a more in-depth knowledge on before they go on to graduate. So there are you know, lots of different opportunities depending on what area of data science you wish to pursue. So um, in general, the data science program is a professional master's degree program, which means that it's once again preparing you to be a data scientist at the end of your degree. So it really has that hands-on knowledge um, and that experience kind of within the industry to get you, you know, prepared to be an amazing data scientist when you go on to graduate. Uh, it is also an interdisciplinary program. So you will take classes in different departments. You will take uh, classes with faculty in different departments. So it gives you that option, um, you know, if you're a data scientist, but you have interest in a lot of other fields, uh, it's a really great program for you because it is a very collaborative and interdisciplinary program. Most students will complete the degree in two years over four semesters. So if you're starting in fall 2022, uh, you will take classes in fall 2022, spring 2023, fall 2023, and then you'll graduate after spring uh, 2024. Uh, so most students will complete the degree, degree in two years. There is the option to finish it um, anywhere from really a year and a half to four years, depending on how many credits you take per semester, but that's something that we'll work on as we work on your course planning throughout your time in the program. So now we're going to jump right into that application tips part of um, the presentation. So we want to make sure that you have plenty of time for these, um, these application tips. So in terms of what we require in order to apply for the degree, so we do require a bachelor's degree, and this is an accredited bachelor's degree or the international equivalent. We do require a minimum of an undergraduate GPA of a 2.75 on a 4.0 scale. So that's typically about a B or C average minimum. Um, and we also require you to have some type of adequate preparation for graduate study in data science. And this can be evidenced by a lot of the different things that you're going to submit as part of your application, including some experience you have, whether it's paid or volunteer experience in data science um, or another professional field. Um, and we're also going to look at that academic record. So we're going to look for, you know, different trends in your grades, different classes that you've taken to make sure that you are prepared to handle, um, you know, an intensive graduate study um, in the field of data science. However, uh, we do certainly prefer certain qualifications to make your application stand out. So strong applicants will have an under 
graduate GPA of a 3.2 or higher on a 4.0 scale. Uh, so that's typically above a B average in most of your classes. We also want to see that you have experience using data science in real world settings. So once again, that could be through a professional job or internship that you've previously had. It could be through a volunteer or kind of extracurricular project that you've taken on. Um, but we would like to see that you have some experience in data science prior to uh, applying and, and completing the degree. And then we do also prefer applicants to have a prior knowledge in math and programming. Uh, so really right from the start, we want you to be able to jump in and start taking classes such as data structures and algorithms and statistical methods. So we would like you to have differential calculus, integral calculus, and linear algebra kind of as a base level mathematics knowledge. And we also would like you to have some Python and R programming language as those are the two programming um, languages that we use. Uh, as a reference point, most of our statistical classes use R programming and most of our computer science classes use Python. So we would like to see exposure to both um, and strong applicants will have an intermediate level of programming knowledge uh, to be really successful in the program. So kind of back to talking about that prior knowledge. Uh, once again, it, it's recommended that applicants have some experience with programming and mathematics, but we do understand that students have different experience levels um, and ways to experience these different courses. So some applicants will have more of a formal undergraduate course in um, programming and math. Other students will have taken an online um, MOOC class, so classes on Coursera or um, different platforms. Potentially students have taken a data science or programming boot camp. Or of course, some students learn right on the job where they might come from a non-technical field, but, but they you know, are now work in some type of programming capacity and they still have intermediate level of Python and R. So whatever way that you've kind of learned these different topics, we want you to indicate that experience with that prior knowledge on your application so we can thoroughly evaluate um, your ability to do well in the classes. Uh, in regards to that, though, there are really two different options for students. So for students who have kind of that prior knowledge that I've been talking about, you'll go right into the direct to data science pathway. So those students with that uh, kind of required mathematics and programming experience will take those 30 credits towards the degree. However, in really exciting news, um, we have a bridge to data science pathway. So if you don't have prior math or programming experience, but you're looking to do this degree to either switch careers or um, you know, take your career to the next level, but you don't really have that you know, strong math or programming experience, that's absolutely okay. We still encourage you to apply um, under this bridge to data science pathway. So these are for students without that math and programming experience. And uh, it allows you to take some prerequisite classes uh, before you kind of get into those core classes. So it allows you to take uh, programming for data science and math for data science uh, to also kind of get you up to the level to then be able to get into those core classes later. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions about that bridge to data science pathway but this is an option for those that don't have that prior knowledge um, as part of their degree program. So in terms of the individual application, all of you should have started your application at this point. So you have probably accessed that graduate admissions application, which is great. Um, that's where you're going to be submitting all these submission materials in addition to um, the actual application itself. Uh, so the application itself is going to ask for, you know, your basic information, your name, email, contact information, all of that information, and then it's going to ask for some different submission materials. So in terms of our application, we do require transcripts, a personal statement, 
letters of recommendation, a resume, and proof of English proficiency um, if you are an international applicant. After you do submit those materials, you will also have to pay an application fee um, upon submission of your application. We do not require GRE scores. And in fact, we do not review GRE scores. So even if you have taken the GRE and you try to submit it to CU Boulder, the admissions committee will not see that GRE score as part of your application. Um, so we do not need you to submit the GRE score at all as part of the application. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about each of these different materials and ways to really kind of strengthen your application overall, as this is an application tips webinar. So the transcripts themselves, um, it's important to know that we need transcripts from any institution that you have earned a degree. So if you have an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and potentially a previous master's degree, we would need all of those transcripts submitted as part of your application. However, we only need unofficial transcripts needed for application review. So you can submit the transcripts, a scanned copy of your transcripts directly into that application portal. And we only need official transcripts um, once you are admitted and prior to starting the program. And that information will come at a later date. Uh, but we only need the unofficial transcripts at this point. It is important to know that depending on if you are an international student or if you've attended um, an institution outside of the US, we do need those transcripts to be in English. Um, so there's a lot of different helpful tips about the transcript submission if this applies to you on our international graduate admissions page. And I'm also happy to answer those questions as well if you um, have a transcript that's not in English or if you have questions about what to submit. Um, we also do any recalculating of GPAs for international transcripts. So there's no need to get it evaluated by any type of credentialing service. Um, in terms of transcripts, though, we typically look for those classes that you've taken. We look for grades that you've received in any relevant classes. Um, and then, of course, we're looking for that academic performance piece as well. So we're looking at your overall GPA and kind of the individual grades in some of those key classes. Uh, so that's typically, um, you know, what we look at in a transcript. If you are worried about your GPA or um, any courses and grades that you think might impact your application at all, um, I highly encourage you to utilize some of the other spaces on your application to explain that, including the personal statement and then potentially um, adding a third letter of recommendation from a faculty member to kind of strengthen your application. And I'll get into that in just a second, um, but these are some options if you're worried about your grades overall. Um, in terms of the next piece of the application, we do also require a personal statement. Um, this is a really exciting place to tell your story. So use that personal statement to talk about your experience and interest in data science. So why do you wanna be a data scientist or um, why is this program the right fit for you to kind of take it to the next level? of your professional experience. Um, this personal statement should only be one page maximum, so single space, so certainly is not a long document by any means, but we really want you to be able to highlight your academic professional goals and talk about how this program helps you achieve those goals. Um, it's also, once again, that a good space to highlight any inconsistencies or worries you have in your academic performance. So if you got, you know, a C in a calculus class and you want to explain, you know, certain situations on maybe why you received that grade, that's something you can also include in your personal statement. Um, and a good pro tip is to uh, highlight the program. Once again, talk about why this specific program is the right fit for you to achieve your goals and to kind of bridge your experience or interest in data science to achieve those goals. Uh, so make it more specific. The more specific you can get, uh, definitely the better. 
And if you can include any specific reasons on why CU Boulder's program is the best program for you, um, that is certainly um, encouraged. So in terms of the letters of recommendation, we do also require the submission of two different letters of recommendation as part of this degree program. Once again, if you are worried about your application at all for any reason, you do have the opportunity to submit a third letter. So once again, if you're worried about your academic performance or if you are someone with more of a non-traditional pathway to data science, uh, but you want the admissions committee to know that you have some prior experience with data science, you know, through professional means or volunteer means, uh, this would be an opportunity for you to also submit that third letter. Um, a good pro tip to remember is that letters of recommendation should be written by those who can talk about your ability to do well in grad school and specifically this program. Um, so certainly think about recommenders who know you and your abilities and can highlight those in the letter. So it's certainly better to know to ask someone to write this letter that you know and who knows your work rather than someone who um, you might interact with, but they don't quite know your work and can't really write kind of a, a very strong letter of recommendation. Um, you can certainly use references from professional or academic sources. Um, and it just kind of depends on where you're at in your uh, pathway to data science. So for students who are currently in their undergraduate degree, or for students who are recent graduates, certainly faculty members who know your work might be great recommenders to look for. Um, however, for students who have been out of school for some time, certainly supervisors or colleagues would be a great way for you to um, receive that letter of recommendation. So there's not necessarily a right or a wrong person to ask. Just make sure that you're asking someone who once again can talk about your ability to do well in grad school and in this program. If you do any type of volunteer work, you know, asking the head of the organization that you volunteer with to write a letter of recommendation would also be a, a great way to uh, strengthen your overall application. So next, uh, we do also require the submission of a CV or resume. Um, I certainly, you know, you can submit any resume that you already have. Um, you know, you don't need to create a new one just for the purpose of this application. But what I do want to encourage you to do is to use this resume or CV as a snapshot of what you want to highlight to the admissions committee. You know, what skills, experiences, um, et cetera, do you want to highlight on your application that you haven't really otherwise done? Um, you know, have you taken an online data science and boot camp? Have you, um, you know, taken on a project at work that's outside of your normal responsibilities? Have you done an internship, whether it's in the field of data science or not? You know, highlight those different experiences. And once again, use that as a snapshot of everything you want us to know. So of course, highlight your academic background, any degrees that you've received, of course, highlight any professional experiences you have, whether they are directly related to the field of data science or not. Um, and talk about any other skills or experiences you want the admissions committee to see. Um, and this can include volunteer, it could include, like I said, projects, different programs that you're a part of, professional organizations. Um, if you've attended conferences, you know, presented at conferences, those type of things, put that in your resume. A, um, as the admissions committee does use this as, you know, a snapshot of everything you want to highlight about yourself. So uh, next is the proof of English proficiency. Um, so this is primarily for international applicants. Uh, if you are required to submit proof of English proficiency, we do accept TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo. Um, and we do have minimum scores for each, as you can see. Um, it's important to know that these scores must be official. So if you're submitting a TOEFL score, this needs to be sent directly from ETS. 
Um, if it's a Duolingo score, it also has to come directly from Duolingo. Um, scores cannot be older than two years old. Uh, so that's also an important note. And if you do have questions about if you need to take an English proficiency exam or not, um, we do have a really great resource from the International Admissions Office, and there are different country-specific requirements. So I would encourage you to either reach out to us, International um, Admissions, or to take a look at the link, um, which is here, and it's also on our website, to look for any country-specific requirements that might apply to you, and if you need to submit this proof of English proficiency. So in terms of timeline, I know you're all excited to apply and find out when you get admitted, which is very exciting, and we're happy to get those admissions decisions to you quickly. Uh, but the applications themselves close on January 15th at 10 p.m. Mountain Time. So pay attention to the different time zones that you're currently located in and to the applications um, on when they are due. So in regards to that, uh, just make sure that you are submitting materials early um, as all of those application materials are required to be submitted by that deadline. If you feel like you'll have any issues submitting anything or if your recommender is gonna be late submitting a letter of recommendation, reach out to us early um, and you know we're happy to work with you, but try to plan it early so that doesn't happen. Um, after applications close, at that point, the admissions committee will start to review your application. Um, so we don't review applications before that point. Uh, so even if you submit it today on November 1st, you, we still re will review your application on January 15th. And then at that point, we are planning on releasing decisions um, in by at least mid-April. So you'll have plenty of time to have that decision um, and, you know, kind of discuss uh, course planning and um, everything like that prior to you starting in August. So, um, as we kind of wrap up this webinar, I want to give you some final tips as you work to complete your application. So, once again, use the different spaces in your application to highlight your motivations for pursuing this specific program. Use that personal statement, use um, the resume and objective, you know, different things to highlight why this program. And the more specific you can be, the better. It's also important to know that uh, the admissions committee does do a holistic admissions process, meaning that we look at all of your application materials and we review everything in the context of the whole meaning not a single application material is more important than another. And we're certainly looking at everything and the whole picture. So the better you can tell that story, whether you come from you know, a more traditional data science background or non-traditional data science background, you know, talk about that, bridge that experience and highlight once again, why this program is the best fit for you. Um, because of that holistic admissions process, we certainly value applicants from a diverse background as we know, everyone's pathway to data science is a little different. Um, so certainly use this application to tell that story. Another tip I want to once again uh, drill in is to start early and make sure you submit all materials, uh, you know, early and ready by the deadline. So if you do anticipate any delays, reach out as early as possible so you can start working with us and we're aware of the situation. Um, but if you start early, then you won't run into any issues with the deadline. And then of course, reach out if you have questions. Um, our email is datascience at colorado.edu. I'm happy to answer those questions. We have um, other people that are also happy to answer those questions. And that's what we're here for. We're here to help you as you complete your application from the first moment you hear about our program and really until you graduate and beyond. So utilize us um, as a resource as well. Uh, so kind of the final thing before the Q&A section is I just want to plug some future webinars as well. So if you uh, you know, are interested in the program, I encourage you to come to these different webinars to hear from different people, not just me. Uh, so on November 18th, we will have a meet 
the data science students. So it's an opportunity for you to hear about the student experience, um, hear about the different backgrounds of our students and kind of what brought them to this program. Um, in addition to you being able to ask any questions about that student experience and you know what, what they experience um, as students in their classes and uh, in, in their campus in general. And that webinar is going to be starting at 12 p.m. Mountain Time on November 18th. Um, on December 1st, we'll also have an additional application tips webinar. So if you want to join again and get your questions answered that you weren't able to get answered today, feel free to join us at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time for that application tips webinar. Um, if you wanna hear from our faculty and kind of what they're doing in their classes, what classes they teach, um, and just hear about their professional background, there will be a Meet the Data Science faculty webinar on December 7th, that will be at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. And then finally, right before the deadline, uh, we will have a webinar that is going to be more of a program Q&A, some last minute questions about applications, or hopefully by then you've also submitted your application, so you can certainly ask questions about next steps, things like that. Um, and that's gonna be at 9 a.m. on January 6th. And then I just wanna remind everyone one more time that the application deadline is January 15th at 10 p.m. Mountain Time. So we hope to see you at some of these upcoming webinars and uh, hopefully we'll see you next year on campus as well. So at this point, um, I- I'm Sorry, Caitlin, I'm gonna jump in. We, we've gotten a few questions, so I thought I could just read them out and then both of us could probably answer them. Yeah. Um, so remember, if you have questions, go ahead and throw them in the Q&A section on Zoom. If you put your mouse down towards the bottom or if you um, open the menu on your phone, there's a little Q&A button and you can submit them there. Um, so one question was about the letter of recommendation. So they asked, is it better to ask, for example, the director of my department or my direct supervisor or my teacher who knows me better? Do you look at titles versus, um, you know, how well they know the person? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so I would certainly uh, personally recommend that you ask someone who knows you better. Uh, you know, if if the CEO of your company or if the the program department head, uh, you know, knows you really well, then certainly that's helpful. But I would highly encourage you to ask people who know you better. So that would be more of your direct faculty member who knows your work um, and your direct supervisor. Uh, so I think overall, it's better to have a strong letter of recommendation from someone who knows you better than someone with, you know, a, an important title, but um, can't really get into that depth and breadth of why you're, you would be prepared for this program. There, thank you, Caitlin. Um, there was another question about application fee waivers, and I can answer that. I can say, uh, we don't have departmental application fee waivers at this time. But the university does offer application fee waivers, for example, for folks who are in the military, things like that. Um, if you go to our website and look at the FAQs, you can find the links there. Just a heads up, to be eligible, you do have to apply for that before you submit your application. So definitely look at, look at our FAQ, follow those links, and see if you're eligible before you hit submit, because you can't do it after the fact. Um, Another question, is it okay to submit unofficial transcripts? I think you said unofficial, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> yes, yes, great question. So yes, please submit unofficial transcripts at this point um, in the process. We only need official transcripts um, once you're admitted into the program, but before you start. So at this point, we only need unofficial transcripts. Um. Great. There is another question about the GRE and how we don't require it. Um, so I'm happy to actually answer this one a little bit. Um, we did, we learned a lot about the GRE, especially during COVID, and it actually isn't necessarily the best indicator of whether students will be successful in their graduate careers, and it can lead to bias. Therefore, we removed it as a requirement and stopped our reviewers from seeing it. So yes, you actually do not need to submit the GRE. And if you do, we won't 
your viewers won't even be able to see it. So um, great question. Um, another question, do you have a spring intake in 2023? Sorry, is, should that be 2022? 2023. I know. Yes, spring that's 2022 right. yeah. is happening in a couple of months, which is great. Yeah. Um, spring 2023 at this time, uh, no, we are only going to be offering a fall intake. Um, that could potentially change, but probably not before spring 2023. Okay. Um, another question from a student who doesn't have maybe the same math and science background that um, some of our direct to science pathway students will be taking. They were asking if there's anything that they can do to kind of catch up or, you know, kind of refresh their memory um, to prepare before the term starts in fall. Yes. Great, great, great question. Um, so we, we are planning on offering a math for data science course that will be offered on Coursera. Uh, it will be taught by one of our CU Boulder faculty members, and that will be available in spring 2022. Um, so in, in late February and early March is when that class is going to be offered. Uh, although you cannot receive academic credit as part of this degree, um, it does give you a great opportunity to look at some of those materials and refresh that math knowledge. Um, for programming, I can certainly also offer some different um, MOOCs or, you know, different classes on Coursera as well to kind of brush up that skill set on Python and R. Um, so certainly reach out. We also have a couple links on our website too um, to kind of help you as you kind of brush up on that skill set. But I think, you know, depending on your personal preference, online classes are a great way to go. Um, and there's a lot of online classes with varying levels of, you know, beginner level, intermediate level, advanced level in programming and different math topics. Great. Yeah. And you can find some of those links in our FAQ section. Um, so if you're looking and you're a little bit hesitant to email us, you're always welcome to email us, but it is also in our FAQ. Um, two more questions that I'm seeing. One is, I can answer this one. It's asking about decisions being released in mid-April and whether there's any, any possibility of getting the answer earlier. So I will say mid-April is the latest that we'll release decisions. We are hoping to release them by mid-March, but um, you know, sometimes we get more applications than we plan for, so we need a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, but we are aiming for mid-March. So those of you who are hoping for an earlier answer, just keep your eye on your email. Um, we get those to you absolutely as soon as possible. We want you to have all of the information as you make your decisions before you move forward with next steps. Um, the, the last question I'm seeing is, uh, about the deadline, which is a great last question, I guess, to remind um, if there's anything uh, to plan ahead for. I think that you mentioned some things might take longer to get. Um, and the things, Caitlin, tell me if I miss anything. The things that stood out to me were probably your letters of recommendation. Remember, you're kind of asking your you know, colleagues or your professors for a favor. So you want to give them enough time so they don't feel rushed. Um, so at least two letters of recommendation, maybe three. Um, and then also if you have test scores, so if you have English proficiency scores, you'll want to plan ahead to be able to get those submitted and sent over. I know sometimes the companies take a little bit to send those over. Was there anything else that stood out to you, Caitlin? Yeah, those are the two things that will certainly take time because they involve other people. So if you already have people in mind that you want to write these letters of recommendation, ask now. Uh, you don't want to be asking the day of because they probably won't be able to submit that in time. And then once again, you're going to have that delay with submitting your application. Um, I know different TOEFL scores, IOTS, they usually take about 10 to 14 business days to get to us. So make sure you're at least doing that by early January um, if you are submitting those scores. Once again, if you think that you're gonna have any delays in getting those test scores to us or anything else, just reach out so we're aware of it. Um, and then also if you, you know, need some additional time to rewrite your resume or to write that personal statement, things always 
please take longer than you probably <laughs> think they're going to take. Uh, so just make sure you're giving yourself enough time to adequately put together an application for admission review. I guess I should plug um, transcripts could take a few days too. usually unofficial transcripts are a lot faster than official transcripts. But it will really depend on your institution that you went to for your undergrad or if you've taken any grad courses. It might be as simple as going online and just, you know, printing it to a PDF, but it might be a little bit more involved than that. So definitely take some time to look at what your institution's ordering process looks like and kind of the timeline for that. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it looks like that's all of the questions that I can see now, which um, we're almost out of time anyway, so that's, that's good timing. Uh, just a reminder that uh, we are going to put the video recording of this session on our website. So if you go to the admissions and then events section, you'll find it there. Um, and then we also do have an, you know, a few more sessions coming up that you can find on that same page. So if you still have questions or you'd like to learn more, we would love to see you at those sessions as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess we can just end by saying thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really our pleasure to have you and we look forward to seeing your applications. And feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'm here to help you throughout this process. So once again, it's data science at colorado.edu. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your week and good luck, good luck as you complete your application. Thanks, bye.